Yeah, I got stuff to talk about, but you're gonna have to hit that uh, beautiful yeah, yeah, bean no, footage I'm first. Just, I'm more, Im I'm impossibly tangled. I'm, I'm Sir Flobojan Thunderhammer, and I'm Teflon Frosthammer, and I'm Cabbage Tide Hammer, and this <laughs> is what. <laughs> if Ampgard Knighthood means anything, you can't knife a motherfucker what and keep. <laughs> What have you done? And the thing that people uh, need to understand it's essentially the about arts and sciences events reason. is that your <laughs> yeah, scores right. don't matter. Jeez. Do you want a black phoenix or a white phoenix? Jeez, language, man. We're yeah, on right. a freaking podcast, for fuck's sake. Mind-blowing experience, right? Hello, everyone, and welcome to WACT, where we can discuss topics important to the Amp Guard community at large and talk with interesting people from around the foam-fighting world. And this you're stuck week, with us today. Yeah. This week, you're stuck with the three of us. Um, the, so we were actually going back and forth on what to talk about. We had a few things that we thought would be cool, but one of the things that we have tangentially touched on in the past before, but never actually sat down and just went over is what we think makes up a really good park day. Maybe one of our favorite memories from a park day or something like that. Um, I, I know, especially during the belt weeks, we were talking about some of the different things that you can do to improve your park day. But just starting from the very beginning, what makes a good park day? And by the way, this does not have to be what you do at park because I certainly know that I do some things at park that don't necessarily contribute to the absolute best park day that could be. This is an ideal, right? Man, I saw this topic get floated over the group chat and I thought none about it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone else buy me time? I got to think about that one. Sure. So um, I... I think that it's best to start uh, at the very beginning. If we're talking about kind of an ideal situation, um, send out a blast to everybody, letting them know like, hey, headed out to park or something like that. This can be, we our, our group uses Facebook Messenger, and we just have a park level messenger that everybody can send it out to. You can post it to the group. If your group has a Discord, you can send it to there. But just something to kind of get people hyped and let them know that, Hey, things are starting to happen. People are starting to show up. Uh, if you've left the house and you can just shoot a quick message as you're getting in your car that says about 30 minutes until I'm at park, that can make other people, you know, can kick other people's butts in gear and say, oh, yeah, I should go ahead and grab my stuff and go ahead and get to park. It might be a double-edged sword, too, because we've done this a lot where, like, one of us is like, hey, man, I had something come up. I'm not going to be able to make it today. And then someone who is on the fence likely occasionally it's me uh looks at it and says <laughs> uh i guess i'm just not gonna go today i'm gonna be like hey man not feeling well i'm not gonna make it out today <laughs> so i think i think if you're doing that i would be careful about saying hey i'm not gonna make it unless you're like champion and you're letting people know that hey um uh have games or things to to do for games or something like that yeah this I'm is what i'd plan here. on running yeah yeah if anybody wants to pick up the mantle for the weekend. Something like that, yeah. Um, and and by the way, that isn't meant to sound shitty. To, to any of the people listening at home saying, uh, well, you know, I don't know if you should let someone if you're not, uh, no, if you're not going to be coming out, isn't meant to be shitty. No. This is a psychology thing, right? This is a, uh, we're, we're talking about, and all, your park has it, every other park has it, those people that are on the fence every week on whether they're going to be out or not can see, look at that and it becomes this just this mental justification for them to say, well, if if this person is going to come, whether I like that person or not, right? If this person isn't going to come out, maybe I won't come out either. And if you're one of those people, be honest with yourself, right? Just, I am one of those people. Flo, I am one of those people. I'm not saying that because I'm on the show. I actually am. But I have recognized that I am. And when I see messages come through like that, I don't say, well, I don't know if I'm going to end up coming out. I say instead, well my friend so-and-so is going to be out, my friend so-and-so is going to be out. You've got to get over the, the lethargy of, of saying it's so much, it, it costs me so many spoons to get my stuff together, even though I know that I'm going to have fun when I get there, I don't even want to go. You have to fight through that and just go ahead and go. Mm -hmm. um, for me, like uh, just the, in general, like a park day being structured so I know what to expect, um, is one of my favorite things that we have done in the past and we're kind of going back to again um like we would ditch for x amount of rounds um and then we would do two battle games maybe three depending upon what it is but class games and sometimes it'd be like one militia then go to class 
to kind of get a full like warm up of incorporating rules and even some I, I think that maybe even the do some ditching then do a militia game then do uh, class games might be a good thing to do on a week to week basis in some ways because if you get a new person and they get there at the start of the day then there's more levels for them to go through to get into the game and they're not having to go through as many rules at the same time. Um, so it's possible that that's really good. Um, it's worked for us in the past, but I'm not saying that it is the end all be all kind of, uh, structure. Um, so this would be the like one scotch, one bourbon, one beer, like one yeah. ditch, one, one militia, one class. Game. Yep, exactly. Well, I like it. And, and kind of like Teflon was saying there, the, Having structure helps no matter what level of involvement you are in any organization. How many of you have been in a a guild on an MMO or something like that and knew that you raided every Tuesday and Thursday, right? If your guild just said, oh, we'll raid whenever, you know, enough people get on. God, that sucks. It always Whenever fails. 40 people happen to be around at the same time. Yeah, no, you need that level of organization. And it can come down to, it, it goes into Amp Guard and comes down to the small things too. We talked about this when we were doing our champion talk many, many, many moons ago now. But just being able to post things up like, hey, everyone, these are the three games that I want to run today. Like, these are the three things that we're going to be doing. And I know for a fact that the two gentlemen sitting beside me right here have gone out to a park day when they knew that they were going to hate one of those games. They still played in it. I played in it. Um, we had fun in that all of us were out there playing, and then we gave feedback to the person that had run it on the things that we thought w uh, could be improved, right? But the point was we still went out and we, uh, we did it. It's You can be in a situation where even if you're, you have a champion who is less experienced and... Uh, is making some newbie mistakes, as we all have made, uh, that, that you're still able to, to go out and, and just enjoy being with your friends and having fun. It's not always, it, you, you kind of have to peel back from that hyper-competitive, oh God, I've got to win sort of attitude sometimes, right? Yeah, so the, uh, the other thing that the structure helps with, I think, is that um, those who are focused on one aspect of the game know when to show up at that time um so for years for us at radiant valley when, when we were in oak ridge we did this structure and pretty much all of the fighter type people who stick jocks or whatever you want to call um came early to ditch and then um the people who didn't care as much about ditching and stuff like that kind of trickled in for the first game and and were all there for sure by the second game and it kind of allowed there to be like a, a split in in um, taste for the game, but allowed everyone to participate in their section of the game. Because um, it's this is one of the things that is rough sometimes at a local park level, especially when you have people who decidedly don't care as much for battle games and only want to ditch or one-on-one -on -one or something, and those who really want a battle game. But when you only have 10 people and four of them are just going to go do one-on-ones on the side or something like that, you now only have a 3v3 and it's harder to keep retention and while i totally respect the idea of like do what is fun for you if you're going to look at this game as a community you're going to have to actually participate in the community as well well yeah and if you only ever do what's fun for you eventually it will just be you doing yeah i mean we've seen this over what is it, like 20-something years across uh, Mystic Glade and Radiant Valley, yep. there's been big peaks of like 40-plus people at the park on a normal basis and then a big drop to six. So, yeah. And not just, those, uh, not just those two parks either. This is, this is every park that I've seen. I always go back to uh, Walbaron's Park. Walbaron and Beerwinch were running a park. This is a uh, two people. You, you don't like Beerwinch's name? No, um, I love the name. I just forgot that was the name. Yeah. <laughs> Walbaron and Beerwinch were two players here in uh, Winter's Edge. They were running a park. And they were with uh, people that would later c go uh, on to become knights in our kingdom, like uh, Sir Loric and other people. They were putting a lot of work into this, right? A lot of heart, a lot of soul being poured into this park. But 
they went through the exact same thing where they started playing things that they thought were fun and uh, it wasn't necessarily reading the park and started losing people. And I want to point out, these were people that weren't slacking. They were, they were making props for their battle games, doing all kinds of other stuff, right? So it is learning to read your park and then reassessing as it grows. You have to, this isn't something where it's like you do it once and it's done forever. Yeah. You know, once you get over a certain number of people, the types of things that you're doing may necessarily have to change to different types of games because that format doesn't work well once you have 20 people coming out to your park. Mm-hmm. And those, those 20 people will have fun the first one or two times that they do it because there's 20 people there and they're new. They don't know shit for shit. But it'll get boring for them after a while. So it's one of those things. Uh, we haven't even gotten out onto the field in our explanation yet, and I think we're about 10 minutes in. But <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is why this is a super, super important part, and it's so, so easy to do. You do not even have to make up the battle games. Go online to any of the millions of references out there. Okay, it, the seriously five or six major references there are out there for battle games. Um, go mean, ask. So if you're if you're pressed for time, there's nothing so good as a simple thing done well. Yeah, Capture right. the flag, yeah. dog. Ding the bell. Yeah, just, just make the and p- variations built on those. Yeah, I mean those are fine. We did one. We had a we had a kid out at our park for a while who loved playing archer. I mean, we we his name was Quiver. We he absolutely loved playing archer, and uh, Teflon was trying to come up with a game, and so we had a capture the flag game that was also had a neutral archer element. So you could go and capture the point where the archer was in the middle, and then that archer was on your team, and he would fire at the other team. But the objective was really a a capture the flag. Mm-hmm. Perfect example of something that is a super simple uh, element. I think that our flags were even just shield covers or something that we had taken off. It was n- not anything fancy at all. Yeah, we had uneven teams and one bow. And if you got rid of the bow, it became even teams. But you don't want to get rid of somebody. Yeah, you know? right. Um, so trying to, to make uh, everyone fit in the game is a really good good idea. Yeah, make your plans. Find a game that you think is fun if you're the one that is in charge of running all of that. Even if you're not and you think you found a game that sounds fun, go ask the people that are in charge of it if you can run a game. I'm sure they'll say yes. Um, the If they don't, go ahead and send them to uh, Teflon. And <laughs> sure. I mean, I'm always down <laughs> for talking about stuff like that. But oh, wait, did you mean send the game idea to Teflon or send the, the champion who won't let you run your game to Teflon? Oh, yeah, I meant the champion. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Teflon will sort them out. Yeah, right. They'll give a little look for yeah, the business. The business. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, yeah, this is... This should not be a huge part of your 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 day or a huge part of your planning scheme for how to make Park succeed. It should just be something that we need to really impress is uh, is super important and that pretty much anybody can do. So we have notified people that we're going to be coming out. We have been uh, respectful of those that aren't going to be able to make it. We have not let our uh, depression or whatever <laughs> it is that 99% of us suffer from at this point keep us from going out and having fun with our friends. We are on our way to the park. Uh, next big thing that I'm going to toss out there is make sure that you have some kind of hydration. Um, I know that we did a, a thing on cold weather fighting, but this is true all year round. You need something. Bottle. If if it's that your park pitches in and grips gets a whole case of water, this isn't hydration. No, <laughs> just yeah. to be fucking clear, yeah. you'll die. Yeah, it is. It is not. Get water. Get Gatorade. <laughs> get water. Get Gatorade. This is an all year round thing. Um, know know the limits of your body. Uh, you know, if you're the type of person that's bigger, I'm a bigger uh, bigger guy. Um, I need more water than everybody else. He's a strong growing boy. <laughs> uh, growing out, maybe <laughs> growing round. Um, but uh, I need I need more water than uh, than other people, and I am aware of that. So I went and bought a cheapy water bottle, and I bring it out. I just toss it in with my swords, and I bring it out every single time. And when I get home, I wash it, I fill it back up with water, and then I toss it right back in the bag so that I'm never without it. Being comfortable while on field while you're not fighting is kind of important for me. So like I've actually 
brought my hammock out now every or bring my hammock out every time now because there's a couple trees that work mostly <laughs> it's not exactly where like everyone else is usually hanging out in chairs or whatever but it's close enough um and so like i have a comfortable place to like rest and drink water and stuff and if i'm you know antisocial for the moment then i can just hang out and take a nap basically if i really wanted to <laughs> <laughs> well, and when we're doing battle games or ditching or whatever else we're doing, a lot of the times the kids that have come out to the park will go and climb in the hammock and sit yep. down and talk to one another while they're... So it's it's like a multifunctional sort of secondary social site, too, you mm-hmm. know? Um, trying to think, because we, we've accidentally structured it to... Getting there and, and everything like that. Yeah, I don't. Which want, I actually, like, I was kind of confused on where we were going with that. <laughs> I actually kind of like it, but it's not exactly what what I had meant. So I'm trying to think of my ideal park day. My car starts and runs. Yeah, right. Yeah. It hey, doesn't. Um, I have, I'm out of gas. I have been that that at one point in my life would have been defined as my ideal. Oh park yeah, day. yeah. That, like <laughs> there used to be like if the car started and wasn't on E, it was a good day. Yeah, like, right. Gonna have it. You know. <laughs> It just keeps getting to E. I don't know how. It's mad science or something. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not the the two a.m. Taco Bell trips I keep making. <laughs> um, making sure my gear is good before I get there. That way, there's nothing illegal in the bag. Oh, I'm so bad at you that. Know, I like get to park. Your swords up. Always. I get to park. park. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and do some warm up ditches, but not with that stick. <laughs> yeah. Grab this one over here. You give it the old the the like chalk in the queue. You're like. Wait. Oh, <laughs> no, we're not. I'm not going to stab anyone today. Maybe Teflon put his bag. It's a no stabs kind of day. I'm like that TikTok dog. It's a no stabs day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, honestly, any, in, like, no joke, any day I wake up and can just find all of my garb, it's a pretty good day. Yeah. I have an amped guard closet and it eats garb like a dryer eats socks. I'm not kidding when I say <laughs> this. I set out what I'm going to wear the day before like i don't get it out or anything i'll just toss it on top of my dresser and let my cat make a bed out of it or something because i'm i am that i, I don't want to waste power trying to decide what garb i'm going to wear and by the way get into a position where you have to waste brain power deciding what garb to wear have enough garb <laughs> going back nice. to the going back to the comfort thing have enough garb that you can uh, uh you need that and by the way since we're on uh, comfort stuff as we're getting out to the park, you know, Teflon mentioned his hammock. Um, a sword bag is super easy to get if you're newer and you don't have one. Oh, yeah. um, there is so many resources. A lot of us would used to go to the old military surplus stores and get a duffel bag. Um, yeah, sea bags. Uh, yeah, sea bags. What they're called, yeah. Um, you can get them on Amazon for like 25 bucks or something can like you that. you really? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, um, or... There's the wrapping paper bags. Yeah, is ra- another one. I think Brawl from uh, F- yeah, FR because I can't ever remember how to say their name. Um, had uh, posted a link to one, and it was like instead of twenty five, it was like fifteen. So you have like a cheaper e- economy option that looks like it should be pretty stout too. And I'm gonna go even cheaper than that. Lucas did this, and I thought that it was oh, it was man. pretty dope. <laughs> it's just it is legit one of the blue bags from IKEA. It's the Frecta, and it yeah. costs a dollar twenty nine, and it has a zipper. <laughs> yeah, it has a zipper on it. His sword—it's long enough that his swords fit in it. All of his garb fits in it. Doubles his, as a quiver for <laughs> arrows. It 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 has doubled as a quiver for arrows, though. I for safety reasons, I cannot <laughs> recommend that you do that. <laughs> Works in a pinch, you know. <laughs> but the the whole point here is that there's a whole lot of bags out there that are thirty six to forty inches uh, long. Uh, I think that I picked mine up at Walmart a long time back, and mine is, it's just a, a generic, like, sports ball bag. So, uh, I think it's a baseball bag. Yeah, it's a, a baseball bag, and it's long enough to, you know, stick your glove and, and bats and all of that stuff. How in. big are your gloves if you're having it? No. Oh, they're huge. <laughs> it's like clown gloves going in there, man. Um, this is our night flow. He's not pretty, but he treads water like a sumbitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. Other other comfort things, uh, just to reiterate some stuff that we've talked about in previous episodes, especially with it getting cold. Dry layer socks. Up. Uh, no, my feet don't get that wet. No, no I'm, I'm saying, kidding. Like fucking clean socks, dude. <laughs> layer up on your way out there. You can always peel off. Uh, I actually do. Uh, will bring some level of change of clothes because. I've stepped in puddles when I was out there and it was cold. I've gotten wet and clammy, and it's just it's not comfortable. And especially if you plan on going out to eat uh, afterwards, 
and it's cold. I, again, in the summertime, I'll go and be sweaty and nasty, and I don't care. I'm paying them for their food. But if I'm going to be freezing cold, I want to get some new socks on or something like that. Yeah, It's not that much uh, it, more involvement to just go ahead and toss an extra pair of socks and uh, stuff in the car with you as you're going. Um, and uh, Lucas, actually, I've seen do this. Uh, an extra pair of shoes, if you have slip-on shoes or something like that. Oh yeah, uh, just to bring out because again, your shoes are gonna can be wet and nasty by the time that you finish up for a myriad of reasons, especially if you're fighting somewhere around snow. I like the can- nine blades is listening to this and going, "What are what are they talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> we just wear boots. No, um, sorry, I don't. I, I I don't have a good Canadian accent. Nine blades. <laughs> it's funny because all of the people from Nine Blades that we've talked to have talked more regularly, more regular than we do. Yeah. Uh, hey, how you doing? Um, so, uh, prep stuff. I uh, I can't think of any other thing prep wise. Uh, you make sure you get your gear as far as class stuff goes. If you, yes. you, know, you you've got a class game and things like that, um, it just helps keep things running smooth. If everyone has like their list made or. Or things like that. Make sure they have their own sash. And if they don't, then having a spare bag of sashes and stuff like that. So it's quick to, to do that. And everyone can play correctly. I know I mean, a lot of this depends on having that structure, right? If you know you're going to be playing correctly, yeah. you pack a different bag than you can. Sure. Play. Yep. Um, the class battle. So as far as, like, I guess, past the, like, we just got here thing um, and the structure. So, I like, like I said, I like ditching um, a little bit first. Kind of help warm up. And it's not like immediately full as aggressive as possible you know fighting sometimes it's just kind of dicking around moving getting everything warmed up and everything like that too so don't like blow your ankle out in two ditches or something you know hey why are you looking over at me <laughs> <laughs> no reason <laughs> um yeah no this is i i'm gonna tell you one of the uh secrets to uh old age and amp guard and this isn't necessarily coming from me but talking to people like Zeb, who is older than I am by a couple of years, and Michael Hammer of God, and uh, Arthon, who are, I think, close to 50, or if not more than 50 at this point. Um, when you go to do your ditches, don't start your first ditch at, 100 mi- uh, at, at the flash level speed. Just go out there and swing stick and warm up a little bit. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. That's not the point of a ditch anyways. Um, and give yourself one or two ditches to kind of uh, slowly roll into it, uh, right? I see so many times where people will start out, usually younger people, and their very first thing is they absolutely take off running at full speed. And I am here to tell you, as someone who used to do stuff like that, I'm here to tell you now, you will end up with uh, torn MCL and ACLs over time and torn ligaments in your ankles not because you did something stupid, but just because you stepped and the ground was slightly uneven at full speed, and that person with a pole arm on the other side threw a totally legit shot and was just trying to leg you, and you ended up tripping and landing right on your knee. That is what actually happened to me when I destroyed my knee the first time, was no one did anything wrong. I hit a slightly uneven piece of terrain while someone was shooting at me with a pole arm when I was trying to move to the side, and that was it. And it was because... Uh, we had literally just started. It, I, if it wasn't the first ditch of the day, it was the second. I mean, that's how early it was. And we had to stop the ditch, and my friends carried me off to the side. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, like I said, warm up in the ditch. Um, get like a uh, a ding the bell or or something like that. Maybe a militia game um, kind of thing, and then get into the battle games. And then um, you know, if we're talking just a, a normal week to week there's nothing special planned kind of thing um i really like um what we call what are we i don't know that we have a real name for it but it's like three cones lined up down the middle and it's a uh not king of the hill domination or something like that yeah game. capture the point sort of stuff yeah and so and we just use two different types of cones or two different colored cones and like if they're same type of cone and two different colors then you start out with them side by side and then whoever captures it puts their color cone on top and then, you know, trades it out. Um, if it becomes neutral, then you have the cone side by side, and the other team takes it, then you put your, your color on top kind of thing. So it's very cheap um, type stuff. I found cones at Bargain Hunt for, like, I think there was 12 of them for 3 bucks or something like that. Um, so check that stuff uh, for sure. There's 
random weird things in there. I we found I found a giant flip cup uh, game. Like the cups yeah. were like. Is that why you uh, sent me that? Yeah, they're like. I didn't realize it was giant from the picture. Yeah, so they're like just they're like, like almost as cups. big as a, a, a five gallon bucket, basically. Yeah, I was like, why are they selling flip cup? It's just solo cups. It was yeah. not clear to me when you sent it that it was big. Yeah, they're huge. <laughs> okay. So you can find all kinds of goofy stuff like that. So I like, you know, I like a simple kind of competitive style game, and then after that, any kind of battle game. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be a silly like scenario battle. It can be. A quest, um, a quest, can be a monster hunt for yeah. uh, uh, low c- player count games. So you have like one person playing this all powerful monster type thing, and then everyone else goes and fights them. Um, it works pretty well. Mawbran is actually the one who who told me about that one for a low attendance park day. It can be really fun. So that way you're still using abilities and your classes and stuff like that. So you're never like just fighting and and um, sparring all day because that can get boring to those who really want to play battle games and the thing is is like you can have a fighter's practice any other day of the week it's not really easy to have a battle game another day so those uh designated park days are pretty necessary to go ahead and have the battle games if possible well also we i mean not as much lately but a lot of this podcast we've talked about the curb appeal of the game and Mm -hmm. i mean look if you're ditching you're a fucking dork and if you're doing a battle game you're also a fucking dork right so you may as well do the most noticeable and most interesting to look at shit you can which to me is battle games right like that's if people are walking by at your park and they see you doing a battle game it's usually a lot more interesting and there's a lot more questions they're going to have and they might be more um, more inclined to come up and say, "Hey, what's this? Why is that dude mm-hmm. yelling at that dude? Why is that dude running away from that dude?" You know that that kind of stuff. So it's it's just curb appeal, while, like alone, it's more interesting. This is something that I don't see very often too, and that our park isn't doing right now. But put up a sign, put up a sign that says, uh, "You know, uh, Radiant Valley f- Amp Guard free to play. Come talk to us or something like that." Mm-hmm. Because there's plenty of times that I've walked by. And seen some people doing some stuff that I was like, eh, that looks mildly interesting. But I didn't know if it was a, a community practice or if this was like a church game or if it was a school yeah, or the, like a college that was practicing or something. I feel like if they're doing it in public, you're allowed to ask. Sure, but there's kind of like a social thing that if there's a banner that says something like come play or yeah. ask us something, there's a there's like a unspoken handshake of hey you know this is something i legit can go talk to people about exactly. versus like oh uh, it's a bunch of friends doing the thing and i don't want to like interrupt them necessarily but if there's a banner or something like that then it's pretty obvious that like this is advertised we can go yeah. and do this yeah i um, mean so it's if, helpful if your park is one of the parks that is hoarding all of its money like a dragon, like us uh <laughs> like us then maybe go look around and see how much something like that would cost. Something, you know, in vinyl where it's going to last for a while. I think that you can get them done at Office Max and Office Depot like that. Um, mm-hmm. if, if, uh, I don't know how it costs or anything. but If Ruben's listening, uh, Buccaneers Respite got a bunch of, like, vinyl signs. They had two. Like, one is, like, a big banner, and then one is, like, a, an actual flagpole sign. And they mm-hmm. say they got them for, like, 100 bucks. I want to say it was, like, Vista print, but, like, if you're listening, confirm that. Yeah. Because they were nice quality. Yeah, there you go. And they were... Big as hell, too. Mm-hmm. So lots of different ways that you can do that. And like Teflon said, this is just about not just piquing people's interest, but then letting them know, like, oh, I can actually come up and see what's going on here. Cool. Which kind of ties into, like, the what is a successful day for, for us, too, right? Like, it'd yeah. be really cool that if every practice we picked up or every other practice we picked up a new person, that would be amazing. Mm-hmm. That's not going to happen, but, like, that would be a really successful day for me. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think that for me, a uh, successful day, all joking aside, is uh, getting out there, being able to uh, to play in some games and do some stuff with my friends. The social aspect of the game has always been a big driver for me. Yep. Um, so, you know, I have stated multiple times and will say again here that I am, if you were to categorize me as a Pokemon, I, I'm a tournament fighter in Amp Guard. I do uh, occasionally hop in battle games and do other things like uh, like that, but it is, it's mostly tournament fighting for me uh, through and through. But uh, I have more fun doing the battle game stuff, the quest stuff, the Phoenix League stuff with all of my friends than I ever would in a tournament. It's a different mentality. 
Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much of of what I do now, like whether it's uh, Amp Guard or whether it's, um, you know, going out to the same disc golf park I've gone out to three times that week and throwing four over par when I damn near know I can birdie every hole in that park. Listen, <laughs> Pal <laughs> Station is a monster. <laughs> or, or whether it's uh, playing league and losing 10 A Rams in a row or whatever the hell. Listen, I'm Pal doing. Station is a monster. <laughs> <laughs> but I, whatever it is that I'm doing, I'm doing it because it's an excuse to hang out with my buds. And that's really like at the end of the day, that's it, right? So Amp Guard is just another extension of that. So for me, it's yeah. about the the people, and it's not any specific people, right? It's it's whenever people are out and they're happy, and and so as an example, whenever somebody comes out and they've made something really cool that they want to show off, that's always extremely fun. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever somebody comes out and they have a, a really cool game organized, like we've talked about, that's super fun for me. That's that's mm -hmm. a perfect day. There's there's lots of perfect days um, at park for me now. Um, compared to maybe what it would have been a long time ago where it's like, we ditch all day and we play jugging and then we yeah. go home or we eat Chinese food. Like for me, it's just like, <laughs> it, as long as the people are there and there's cool stuff happening, it's kind of a perfect day. I don't really I mean, that was an equation for us for a while at Mystic Glade when it was a, yeah. that park. Ditch, jug, Chinese food, nap. And I mean that's still a great day. I'm still happy with that. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Like I said it, and I was like, man, that sounds really good right now. But like, <laughs> again, the people have to be into it. So, mm -hmm. whatever people want to do, as long as we're having fun, it's kind of a perfect day for me. If you can find, I, I know that we've said this before too, but if you can find a place to eat too and make it your place, make it like a regular thing. We had a restaurant that we went to. It was a little hole in the wall Chinese restaurant. New that, China, you will be missed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It had been in Knoxville for. I think legit 30 years at that point. And it got to the point where they knew all, all of our names. They would go ahead and get our drink orders as soon as we walked in while we were getting our hands washed up and stuff like that. They were inexpensive. It was easy to uh, get people to come uh, with us, you know, even if they didn't have a whole lot of money because you could get a whole bunch of food for not a whole lot. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and really just, we reached a point where we were just like, hey man, I mean, just come and hang out. You, we just want to hang out with you. We'll grab you a drink or something like that because yeah, that's all absolutely. we can afford. But, uh, but I we got just a lot of free out. Zupa Toscana at <laughs> a certain point <laughs> in my life. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the uh, game-wise, I think that some of the best times that I ever had, we're talking about keeping it simple. Mm -hmm. um, some of the best times that I ever had is when we would come out we spent. We didn't do the thing where it was like we're only gonna we're gonna do twenty ditches. Uh, we would do the thing where it's the first thirty minutes we're gonna ditch. Yeah. Like it, we it, all thirty minutes would be a warm up ditch, and you can go and you'd have people stop and get water and whatever, and then we would go from there into our first set of games, which was always either a generals battle, where. Uh, Every, each one of the generals has one point of sectional armor and is immune to verbal magic, but otherwise is just another player on the field. And when they die, the match ends. Everybody on, uh, you know, a, a hug, a tree, what we would call a tree hugger, which is just you had a base, you had to have both of your hands on with no weapons or shields uh, on the base and would count, I think it was to 100 at the time. But you could adjust that based on how close the bases are and how many people are playing and stuff like that. Um, ding the bell, um, or some simple game like that, and it, that was it was always militia, and that was always our our open up, and we would cycle between which game we play. We had like ten or so mm -hmm. that every single person at the park, if you had been out for more than two weeks, you could recite the rules off the top of your head because they're that simple. Um, from there, we went into uh, a class uh, a objective specific class battle you were trying to take a point king of the hill style you were trying to capture a flag but it was a both flags have to be at base so if we took theirs and they took ours then now we're we're having to to fight for that and um we actually had a over the river and through the woods sort of uh capture the flag course it wasn't just you know we're on two different sides of a soccer field and can everybody can see each other you had terrain that you had to get around and go through <laughs> and jump over, or in my case, slip and fall and tumble down the hill and hit trees. Um, I'm I'm not a very healthy amp guarder. That's what I'm realizing. <laughs> You're not uh, very graceful and cat-like. No, um, not at all. Hey, quick question, because yeah. I can't tell if I need new glasses. Is Jeff's face really blurry? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Blurry to me. Like you and I seem like we're in focus, but Jeff looks blurry. 
I'm just a blurry kind of guy. Yeah. Nobody's ever really used like a Sasquatch thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. I sorry, I was getting close. No, I think it's the light coming down and it my eyebrows makes it weird. Oh yeah, that is a lot better. We gotta yeah. get you a hat. <laughs> All right, sorry, I didn't mean to side rail things. I just I was I, I leaned close and Jeff was kind of noticing it a second ago. I was trying to figure out what was going on there. If you think Jeff is blurry, leave a comment and let us know. And while you're at it, smash oh. the like button, <laughs> hit subscribe, and <laughs> shameless segues. We love them. Um but yeah, so we would do some kind of fun capture the flag thing like that, uh, and we would find an interesting way to set up a course for that. Uh, Jeff's talked in the past about maybe even if if you're at a park where there isn't really an option for terrain, then bringing artificial terrain in like the PVC walls or something like that can certainly add an element of fun. Mm-hmm. And then after we did, so we had done the militia games, we had then rolled into our class game, we went back and we uh, ditched. And we ditched again for about 30 minutes or so. And this was a chance for people to rest after the battle game, to go back out and warm back up, um, get water, especially because it was summer. Uh, a lot of the, the time at, that this period was, or this period of time was happening, and so everybody needed uh, a lot of breaks. Um, and then once we had done with that ditching, we went back into another game. We would do another a uh, militia battle or a class battle, we usually just polled people and said, hey, what's everybody want to do? Mm-hmm. And then we ended the day with another 30 minutes worth of ditching. All of that together equaled up to about four to six hours, depending on how much daylight we had, worth of fighting for the whole day. Um, with about an hour and a half to two hours of it being ditching that happened at different points and four-ish hours being battle games of some kind that happened split up over the course of the entire uh, day. That was a little winning formula for me because it mixed in everything uh, that I loved in the game uh, in a way where none of it got boring, and it was very formulamatic. I knew that if I showed up an hour late, exactly what everybody would be doing. Like, we're in the middle of a class uh, battle with Capture the Flag, probably, or something like that, so I'm going to set my stuff down, and then I'll just go ahead and head out and start reaving or something, because I can't join in for this one, but that's okay. Why me? Why, uh, why is everybody looking at me? It's your ugly sweater. Yeah. Sweater. For, those that are, for those that are listening to us and, and not watching us on YouTube... Cabbage has made himself a sweater out, out of, of his a bath mat. His grandmother's old fucking bath. It's mat. a blanket, and it's got, <laughs> I kept the fringe. What, what he are you has about? he has frill underneath his fringe. his <laughs> arms, like on the underside of his arms. And you know what? Put a put a picture up as the like <laughs> on, on on the the Facebook group so that people can see this if they're not watching. It's it's horrible. I'll just set it as our profile picture on Facebook. Please no. <laughs> yeah. oh, you've asked for this so it's going to happen. Please no. <laughs> um I mean like one final note for me just talking about, you know, it's the people kind of making the the park happen. Anytime somebody comes back with a cool story, whether it's amp guard related or not, I don't really care. But like good storytelling is just like mm. a medium of its own and it's really fun. Yeah. So, like, when the storytellers are there, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a good day. Like, tell me about the thing. Did you go to the <laughs> event that I couldn't go to? Talk about it, you know? Yeah. Um, do we want to transition into our other topic that you had floated on the group chat? Because I did think about that one. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. I mean, it's the it's the hot take that maybe Amp Guard should cost more to play. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not exactly that it costs more, that we shouldn't advertise as, like, a cost nothing, I guess. Right. Yeah. So, set the scene here. When I got in and when mo- when I know that when these two got in and most everyone else, when you get in, we all have this spiel that we run through. And the spiel is something like, hey, this is called Amp Guard. We've been around since the 80s. We're a nonprofit, blah, 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 you know, uh, pseudo sports thing where you get to, you know, hit people with foam weapons and you can do A&S and learn how to cook. It's free to play. No, it doesn't cost you anything, blah, blah, blah. The point that Teflon is making is that we may be a point we may be at a point where telling people that this game is free to play, which by the way, the three of us have also done on previous shows before, isn't necessarily a good thing to do because it's not really free to play. You can come out and you don't have to pay to be there and to swing stick, but if you end up staying at in this organization, and if you want people to stay in this organization, then they're going to need garb, 
they're going to need weapons. Uh, and all of these things incur cost. I mean, if you like the events that make all the cool stories and all of the, uh, you know, the, the um, you know, night ditching and, and everything else that you hear about, these things all have a cost and a, a, a sort of function assigned to them that is not free. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we can say that the game is free to play, and that's great. If you only ever show up at your local park, that might be true. Um, but for all the stuff that makes the game what it is, you know, all of those cool nighting stories, all of those... You know, this happened after dark. All uh, y- any of those stories, those require events to happen, and those are expensive, and they're really hard for kingdoms to make happen. I mean, like I said, hot take because I genuinely believe amp cards should cost more to play, and this is coming from someone who, starting out, uh, got a lot of free Zupa Toscana. Right? Like I was a broke ass <laughs> high school kid, but like I'm seeing what it takes to make the game run now. I'm 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 part of the the budgetary committee, the 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 group that's designing the budget for. AI or designing the, the licensing fee proposals and like, man, this game costs a lot of money to run at a, at a big scale. So, I mean, it, it probably should cost something if you're, if you're going to do anything outside of your local park, right? Break it down for me, uh, Jeff. What, I- what do you mean and what kind of costs are you talking about when you say free shouldn't be free? Um, it's kind of the, the, expectation that you place on someone when you say it's a free game right like like you had you had said garb gear all that stuff costs money but what we end up seeing is that like over time it doesn't cost money for the new player not a lot anyway uh between hand-me-downs to people willing to put their time and energy and and their own money into uh putting a newbie up Right, getting getting their gear together, their first set of stuff, um, their first set of garb, first set of you know shield or this that and the other. Um, so it just uh, I don't know, like it it feels wrong sometimes uh, because I I've, I've spent I don't know how much money on on sashes to loaner gear to things like that that allow some of our players to be kind of free, and it even still isn't completely free. Um, cause you know, swords and stuff become a personal, like I want this one, even the new players. Like if you have a bunch of loner gear, they typically seek out the sword they l- had last week cause they know it. Yeah. Yep. So, um, maybe we should be looking at institutionalizing stuff inside our park about like, Hey, you're free to borrow everything for so long. And then, um, a minor upkeep cost of like a dollar or something like that. That way you're recouping the the funds for the foam and stuff like that whenever you need to remake the swords and stuff or they can just buy it from you for 10 bucks and be done with it I was you, know? say you could you could take the beefy strat which is what he started doing like oh you like that sword i'll make you one just yeah like yeah 30 bucks you know here you go yeah and we i i think that all of us have taken this kind of blind approach to well we we need to be able to offer things like this because some of the people that play the game don't have a whole lot of money, but then those people are also going to the events and, uh, and, and getting swords and things like that. And we, we, we haven't, there's a, we're not really mentally trying to rectify those two things that uh, they know that it's not free. Right. And I totally agree with you, uh, Teflon, that I think that it puts the wrong kind of, uh, spin well around here also like our events are 25 to 35 dollars for entry a lot of other places are much higher than that and a lot of that depends on a variable of things right you have site cost food cost this that and the other right yeah um what this kind of kind of ends up being if you look at some of the lightest touch larps and stuff like that their weekend thing that is a once a month gathering is like 50 to $75 or, or some of them are more even. Well, yeah, um, and we learned from, from other games too, that their idea of an event doesn't include what ours includes all the time. No They're food, like, oh yeah, ours no. is $75 and you don't get food. There's a subway down the street. Yeah. Th- I mean, that's some of the lightest touch ones. They don't have like a feast or anything like that. Right. Might and have so, snacks. Yeah. Might have snacks. So th- a lot of their stuff is put into, um, you know, gear, uh, gathering for their monster towns, uh, prop costs, uh, costuming costs, and stuff like that for Monster Town and things like that. So it's something that we may need to look at as a whole uh, as raising prices for events, which again plays into like everyone's, you know, doesn't have a lot of money and things like this. And this is why like 
being upfront about um, some of this stuff, not, you know, and this is not always, this is not for like a day one newbie or something like that. Right. But, um, you know, as a whole, as a kingdom or something, we may need to look at raising prices. A site prices are going higher. So, you know, we're having to take that portion of the budget and increase it. So we have to increase, you know, a, a ticket price because that is one thing that we just can't control any kind of budgeting for basically, you know, so that that's a thing. Um, more and more kingdoms seem to be looking at prop costs and like uh, champion uh, uh, allotted budgets type things like that so that they can do more cool games and it's not just the basics done really well, which is something to be said about, you know, even on a kingdom level that they can still be very good games. But when you're going to local park doing these basics done well and then going to kingdom doing the basics done well, that kind of is kind of boring uh, in a way so having the ability to do cool things because you actually had a warcraft budget um would be neat like getting more walls getting uh, i don't know like getting a, a cool costume for a monster or something um years ago there was this like stone golem thing that uh was it chuck that no no i mean like this was a um like youtube uh, video thing rather than uh, anything we've done because we did something similar, but oh, I think it came. He from was a it. fire giant, wasn't he? I don't remember. That's I think Jarek, a different Jarek story. in in Winter's Edge. No, there was a stone go- stone golem too at one point because B I think made that that costume thing. Um. Anyway, sorry I interrupted. No, you're good. It was like a it's like a memory foam type Stay puff Marshmallow Man looking kind of <laughs> costume at the time, right? But like it was all painted gray. The the arms were like rock'em sock'em robot uh what are they called the little fucking inflatable uh punching sock'em boppers sock'em boppers that's it more fun than a pillow fight that's right yeah yeah a kind of things basically so that the the stone golem would be like all slowly trudging around and then he'd hit you like kind of punch you but like because there was so much foam like it was i don't know like eight inches of pillow foam basically yeah. there's not really any way that it's going to hurt you or anything like that so doing something to kind of like bring more immersion to the game is going to cost money and that's just you know like if you look at all the other larps like nero or this that and the other they're more expensive on the the thing and they do this every month well i, I want to point out too that when when i'm talking about cost and when i say Amthgard should cost more i i don't i mean yes raw cash is great and if you've got it give it but like cost can be a lot of things and yeah. for a lot of people that might be time mm-hmm. yeah i mean our game you know we've we've said this before our game lives and dies based on its volunteers and like you know looking around it's the same people volunteering who have been doing it for decades and you know i mean new blood steps up and you know eventually carries the torch but like if you're new if it's your you know third week out at park and you're still borrowing swords you should also be you know volunteering to help carry gear to cars you should be volunteering to help pick up trash. You should be volunteering to help collect sign-ins for your your uh, PM if they're busy. You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff that you can do that contributes back to your local park that is not just giving them raw dollars. If you can't afford it, I mean, it's completely understandable. And our game can be accessible for you know people who don't have a ton of cash. But mm-hmm. like, you got to give something back. Yeah, yeah, agreed. So I just I want to be clear that when I say the game should cost more, I, I I mean yes, cash great, but also volunteer time. We need it desperately. So, um, here's one for you. Do you guys remember your favorite day out at park or a favorite thing that happened out at a regular park day? We tell stories a lot about crazy things that happen at events, but do you have uh, any kind of memory of something that happened at a regular park day that really stands out to you? (laughs) So, I wasn't there for the original one, but... Uh, when Radiant Valley was first being started, we met at the Oak Ridge Civic Center. And the Civic Center has this like amphitheater thing that we call the Pringle. And that's kind of where we did all our stuff was right near it because it had, you know, not really seating, but like uh, just flat area that you could sit and be and not exposed to the elements necessarily. But a little ways down, you could walk a path to these uh, large, flat area right these are just walking paths that go around this area and there's really literally nothing in between it it's just barren wasteland but 
we for some reason decided we'd play capture the flag, but we set the flags like it certainly felt like miles apart. <laughs> <laughs> like it was excessive. Like if you remember as a kid and you went to like one of those camps or something like that and you did capture the flag as a kid mm-hmm. and the flags were set, you know, the whole camp was basically the 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 play area, right? It was something along those lines. So there was probably like 15 of us max, right? So there's seven-ish aside, and we're just trucking it for like football field, you know, area across. So that was really interesting because like you'd run and you'd get far enough that you're like, man, I'm going to have to stop running so I can catch my breath. That wouldn't be very far <laughs> and, from me. <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then it gives the other team time to decide that they're going to run and catch you <laughs> at the same time. And I don't know why, like, we use big teddy bear things as the flags. Like, these were huge, like, okay, I say huge, but it was half of me. And at the time, that was really not that big. But uh, <laughs> Regular <laughs> teddy, bear. teddy bears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, a- as the flags. And I don't know, it's super, I mean, I think it was kind of muddy that day, too. So there's... Uh, slipping and sliding, slipping and sliding. There's you know a water pit slash mud pit kind of things around. So you were dodging those and things like that. So it was really fun that way. It just I don't know, like it was just raw fun kind of deal because it was kind of not a, the greatest like weather day, but we made the absolute best out of it we could. There was another time that it had um, after it rained uh, at the. Um, uh, it was at the other Oak Ridge Park. It would um, there was a batting cage area, and it had rained, and it was just this giant puddle. Like I'm talking like 30, 40 feet wide and around, kind of giant puddle. And for some reason, um, it became a battle of who can control the puddle. But some people didn't really want to get that wet, <laughs> so those who were dedicated to uh, the <laughs> being part of the puddle gang or whatever. We were, like, slinging water and this, that, and the other. Like, it wasn't exactly very amp guard, per se, but it was just a really fun day, right? But it was spawned out of, like, hanging out with all of your amp guard friends, and it, I think that it still counts. accidentally had... Because this was, in like, V6, so it was, like, a mutual annihilation game, and then we just decided to take over the puddle because we knew we didn't have to fight as many people at the same time. Yeah, right. Know? So it spawned in the middle of a game. Which honestly, some of my favorite experiences at like events and stuff inside a battle game happen just organically inside of a game. So maybe that's just part of me. Yeah, Yeah, like there's a mini game that I have created or my friends have created inside a battle game. Uh, So that's also good times. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. What Um, do you got, Lucas? I I got like I have so I, I have several, and I don't know which ones to go with. I think the 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 most impactful one for me, and it kills me that I can't find pictures of this because I have looked. Um. But this was forever ago. We were traveling down to Hawks Point, of all places. So that tells you how I long remember ago. this. Yeah. Um, and they were doing, like they had announced beforehand, they were doing Orc Ball or Goblin Ball. I still don't truly know the difference. Doesn't matter. Um, but they had announced that, like, make the biggest, craziest goblin weapon you can. And so <laughs> oh God, yeah. me and Bunch and I believe Boston, who I don't, I don't yeah. play yep. anymore, yep. Um, we, we all gathered at, I think, Bunch's house and... He bunch had this giant polearm core and a bunch of monster noodle, and you know we were like, "What's the biggest weapon we can make? Because it's got to be like carried by three people." So we made the biggest dick and balls <laughs> out of foam that we possibly could. And Nerf this balls. Thing, yeah, no, uh, they were soccer balls, weren't yeah. they? We soccer had two balls. soccer balls, and uh, bunch stole his. I think he was living with his grandma at the time. He stole her bathroom rug <laughs> to wrap the ball and make oh, them hairy, man. make them furry. This thing had veins on it. Not the point of the story. Like we just we spent so much time making this big dumb weapon, and then we brought it out on field, and everybody's like, "Yeah!" Because well, we're all sixteen. We're fucking dumb as shit. By the way, the reason that he was saying that it has to be long enough for three people to wield it is because it. Ba- the rule back then was any siege engine had to be worked by three people. Yeah, and they broke shields. They broke. I, I mean, armor, everything. So siege weapons were like a big deal, and this is one of those games where it might have been useful. But this thing was. Comically large. It was so large that regular size. It made it look like three goblins trying to hold a pole arm, except they were regular sized people holding a huge yeah. cock and balls. That was that was kind of the idea, right? But like, it was so heavy. I think I think we weighed it, and we couldn't really get like we had to take a bathroom scale outside to stand it up, 
<laughs> and I think the thing was like 18 pounds or something. Yeah. So the three of us trying to swing it was just hopelessly dumb. I think we used it for like one fight and ditched it. But like the the everything from the conception of that weapon to the like the actual creation of it to the bringing it out on field was just so dumb and so silly. And it's still one of like my favorite things. I don't know that I do the same thing today, but like a dumb giant weapon is still always super fun. Yeah, um, we who's who? No, no, no. Wait, who's the guy at uh, Iron Springs that has the fucking diving board? It's a Buster sword, but it looks like a diving board because of Anthguard. <laughs> I fucking oh. love that thing. Every time I see it, I'm like, please I think hit it's me with Leon. it. Leon. Yeah, it, it is Leon. We uh we actually went over to Zeb's to make weapons for that exact same game that you're talking about, <laughs> and the weapon that I used in there. And by the way, we suspended normal safety rules for this. Um, within sort of reason. Yeah, within reason. So I had a double sided flail. I had a flail. That was a fla- had a flail head on either side. You mean a, uh, a flail glaive, a flave? Yeah, a flave. Flave a flave. <laughs> Except it wasn't. It couldn't be any longer than a regular. So it was just the length of a regular flail, which at the time was I think thirty six inches, and then had the uh, the chain on either side too. And the rule was that you could kill yourself with it. <laughs> so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we had a whole lot of fun with that. Mine is well, I, but one last thing. Sorry, I remember. No, go ahead. Bunch and I having a spirited debate with the with the person who was running the game over whether or not the balls should count as a handguard. <laughs> and we were, I mean, we were like, come on, they gotta they're there and they're attached and they're and like we're fucking get we're <laughs> rules lawyering balls. Right? <laughs> like we got so heated about this. And it wasn't like we were angry, it was just the humor of like, no, you gotta let the balls be a handguard. Come on, they're they're kind of there. Like mm-hmm. the amount of like enthusiasm about this thing was stupid (laughs) so mine was uh this is this kind of goes back to just those small moments that end up being really big moments uh later but uh i have three and they're all uh short one of my very uh, my very first day ever coming out to mystic glade i remember seeing sons of raw which was the first fighting company that i ever saw it zeb and beefy and Calador and all of these other people, uh, Dorian, and uh, all of them had uh, chunk. All of them had big red shields, and I was fucking around with all of them. And I was like, "So, how long do I have to uh, to be a part of the game before I get one of the clown noses too?" <laughs> 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 and and everybody, we were young, um, and so everybody pops up and puffs up and and uh, beefy beefy. Squ- squ- Sweeps his arm around me and is like, hey, bud, why don't you come over here and talk to me for a sec? <laughs> um, and explain how insulting that what I had just now said was. And I said, yeah, I, no, I was trying to make it insulting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it wasn't meant to be anything else. But uh, And then I became someone that took myself just as seriously as they did for a long time. Um, Another memory, which is also a puddle, is it had just rained. I think that I might have shared this on the podcast before at some point, but it had just been a huge, huge rain on Saturday night, and the part of the field that we were playing in at John Bynan Park was a swamp. I mean, it was a, it was the lowland part of the park. And so the water was already up, and then it started raining while we were out there. So everyone did what we always do. We go underneath the pavilion, we scoot tables back, we fight for a little while. There was a bridge right beside the pavilion that we fought at that this water was running under because the lake was right beside our old pavilion down there. And we decided to go fight a bridge battle. Um, So everyone was fighting a bridge battle with swift running water. I mean, this stuff was pushing me sideways. If you dropped a sword, it was gone. Um, People were tying their swords around their wrist so that they got armed, they would just drop it and it wouldn't go anywhere. Or we just made a rule, I think, at one point where if you got armed, you just didn't lay down any of your equipment after two or three people had their swords swept downstream. <laughs> Jeez. Um, last one. Uh, and, and I remember everybody that was in that battle game. You know, this, is, this was Gator and Paunch when they were young and Daisy. I miss those guys. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, people that ended up being a, a part of the game for a very, very long time. Um, the, the last one, also at Mystic Glade um, back in the day, we used to go out and play all of the time when it was, uh, no matter the weather, as you can see with the flood story that I was <laughs> just telling, um, it snowed. And so we did games where like everyone was a wizard and you threw ice balls, but they were actually snowballs. And that was how you killed people is <laughs> you threw them. 
uh, one person became a frosty. The, this was like a, an actual quest that we were doing. And one person became a frosty, the sm- snowman golem, and yeah. had special powers that he could impart to people. Uh, and um, did you have to defeat him by taking his hat? Yeah, uh, yeah. That's how you took. Yeah. You actually had to knock his hat off with your sword, uh, which wasn't yeah, legal no, because you're hitting people with the head. Yeah. But again, we suspended rules back then. Sure. Not always within reason. And uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, earlier that year. We had been playing, and it had started to hail suddenly. And we all, me and Shalazar and Larry and Hobo and a lot of the people that were just our regulars at the time, huddled under a tree in the middle of a battle game, a a, a pine with some low-hanging branches for like 15 minutes and just kind of bullshitted while big hail was was falling. And it's it's little things like that. Those are the golden memories that that you make over uh, over the course of uh, of, of playing. Th- those three, I think I actually told four, those four <laughs> really stood out to me as, a- as cool park day stuff. And there wasn't, there wasn't any grand thing. We didn't have <laughs> awesome props or... It just, you talking about hailing, you just reminded me that one of the times we had fighter practice out at the old Cedar, Cedar Hill uh, area in Oak Ridge, um, there was a, it was snowing, like it was a good snow too for once. Yeah, and someone had made a snowman, and we were the only people at the park at this point. But this snowman was left over, and someone had the awesome idea of that they're going to tackle the snowman, <laughs> and so they did. They just they blasted <laughs> this thing. It was a good tackle, except for the fact that the center part just got blasted out. And the comically, he would land it on top of the bottom one, and the top part and crushed him in between. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Uh, well, um, do you guys have anything else? Do we? Oh, uh, I did have one more thing that I wanted to say. Uh, as of today, we are going to be closing out our fundraiser that we did for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Uh, just to be clear, as of today, today being Tuesday, by the time oh. this podcast comes out, it will be closed. We'll yeah, make an announcement on Facebook tomorrow. It will be closed, yes. But uh, uh, as of today, Tuesday, November the 30th, uh, we will be closing the St. Jude's uh, Children's Hospital uh, fundraiser that we did. Thank you so much to anyone that was able to donate. Um, we will be doing another fundraiser again next year. We were able to raise, I think it was almost six hundred dollars. I'm I'm actually looking right now to see how much it was because uh, we may have crossed six hundred dollars. I'm not a hundred percent. Let me. Oh, that'd be amazing. You, you vamp for me for a second. I'll look it up. Yeah, sure. So, <laughs> uh, we're going to be doing another one uh, next year. But again, thank you to anyone who was able to uh, to donate. Um, next year, I want to have uh, other methods of help that you can do besides just uh, donating money. Um, there's a lot of different things that organizations like that can use. A lot of times it's very simple things, um, pens, pencils, stuff like that. Uh, you know, anything that you can give to the, uh, to the kids, e- even that's not a, a monetary contribution can help. Yeah, we raised uh, $570, by the way. Nice. Um, our, our goal was 500 We overshot that by a pretty good margin. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, me too. So we will, uh, again, thank you to anyone who's able to do that. Next year, it'll be back. We're going to shoot for 600 next year, see if we can up uh, do better than we did this year. Um, and I didn't have anything else. Do either of you two have anything? I can't think of anything. No, not really. All right. Roll this out. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on YouTube or Spotify to get notified about new episodes. And make sure to follow us on Facebook for announcements and more.